What's up everyone, Lucas here. And in this video, I'm gonna break down some very exotic health benefits of CBG isolate, otherwise known as cannabigerol. So for those of you who are brand new, my name is Lucas. I am the founder of Ergogenic Health. And if you guys are enjoying these videos, please be sure to hit the subscribe button below as I will be releasing very underground health content that you'll struggle to find on Google. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. Oops. So before we discuss this cannabigerol, I need to emphasize a little disclaimer uh, that the information depicted in this presentation is purely for informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional before making any changes to your lifestyle or routine. So what is CBG? CBG is the precursor from which all the other cannabinoids are synthesized, which is why it's often referred to as the mother or stem cell of the hemp plant. CBG is actually found in levels of less than 1% of most hemp plants. So I know many of you listening in will probably or have probably heard of CBD. Uh, however, CBG is a different molecule. So, and obviously that will affect its pharmacokinetics and also its effects in the body. So it's very important to realize that we are focusing primarily on CBG. So in this diagram, you can see a graphical, or I guess like an image breakdown of how CBG is actually like its metabolic fate and its pathway. So you can see that in the actual uh, hemp plant, CBG A is actually converted into uh, THC A and also CBD A, and then eventually CBD and THC. So that's a great example of how CBG is actually the lead uh, compound. And then a lot of the other psychoactive components are also produced from CBG. Keep in mind, CBG is absolutely psychoactive. Um, so don't assume that this is just um, beneficial for inflammation and things like that. It goes way, way beyond that. And it definitely has some activity in the brain, which I'll talk about very shortly. So here are some key effects of CBG in the body. So we know that CBG can act as a moderate antagonist to the 5-HT1A serotonin receptor. Now that serotonin receptor has actually been studied very heavily in um, post-SSRI sexual dysfunction, which is uh, a debilitating condition where people have suffered from a long-term sexual dysfunction following the use of SSRIs. Now, the other benefits of the 5-HT1A antagonism is that it may actually upregulate this receptor over time. And that is a good thing for those suffering from a desensitized 5-HT1A receptors, such as those who've used, say, ashwagandha, high-dose ginger, acetyl-L-carnitine, um, and some other compounds as well. So that's a really beneficial effect. Number two is that it also possesses alpha-2 adrenoreceptor agonism. Now, actually, I did some further research and alpha-2 agonism can actually raise growth hormone levels. So that was quite interesting. I'm, I'm wondering if CBG can also elicit that sort of effect. Now, CBG actually antagonizes CB1. So CB1 receptors, which is the exact opposite of what THC does at that receptor. CB, uh, CBG also is a CB2. So that's peripheral. Remember, CB1 is in the brain. CB2 is peripheral outside the brain. Um, it's, a, it's actually a partial agonist. Um, so that's quite fascinating. That probably explains a lot of its beneficial effects in um, reducing gut-related inflammation and, and um, spasms and things like that. Another potential benefit is that CBG may act as a GABA reuptake inhibitor. Now, that's very beneficial for anxiety and also just for loosening you up, loosening you up in a social setting. Um, I definitely have noticed that myself when I took quite a high dose of the CBG. Um, it definitely made me feel just a bit more groovy and social and 
a bit more confident and also it helped with my expression, which I really liked. Um, the other benefit of CBG is that it has orexigenic effects. And now this orexin system is part of which um, how modafinil actually works. So, um, and also for scolin as well. So that's another beneficial effect that promotes alertness, vigilance, and wakefulness. So here are some technical wide body effects. Um, so basically inhibiting COX-2, so reducing inflammation, it reduced bladder contractility, so improving um, urine control, uh, can activate some of the pain receptors, TRPA1, TRPV1, TRPV2. CBG is also a TRPMA antagonist. This is quite technical. Um, and CBG can also inhibit the growth of various cancer cell lines, which is quite impressive and not surprising. It also inhibited oxidative stress. It reduces in neuroinflammation, beneficial in Huntington's disease, reduced colitis and reduced mouse skin inflammation. So here are some CBG anecdotes, reports, and experiences. I thought this was really important for you guys to, I guess, hear from what the early adopters and those that have the, um, the courage to try this before it really hits the mainstream market. So one person said, and all of these are from Reddit, it gives me a feeling similar to the, similar to the initial rush of a sativa high. I got distillate from IHF and I've been vaping it out of my grasshopper also in the morning. I'm a fan. It's a nice buzz for daytime use. Um, number two was, I've been taking CBG regularly for a couple of months now. I like it and agree that there's a subtle energizing effect. Bear in mind, I'm reading out these anecdotes, but I personally have uh, used just the CBG isolate in oral form. I just put it into capsules. Um, and I noticed a lot of these effects as well, which I, I was really shocked and, and surprised by. I have used CBD in the past and I didn't really like the effects, but CBG is a completely different ball game. I've never smoked CBG alone, only tiny bits of isolate sprinkled on THC buds. A lot of the people who smoke alone report the effects to be extremely light and subtle. I get pretty strong energizing effects that last four to five hours when I take a big sublingual dose. It's like a really strong coffee minus the jitters. I can relate to that, definitely. Just take like one hit and you see how you feel. I've experienced a buzz from CBG, but it's not exactly like THC. Bipolar person here, I'd go with what feels best with you. I feel like cannabinoids affect everyone differently, especially us neurodivergent people. CBG doesn't make me feel like that at all. It gives me a steady stream of concentration, similar to coffee, but without the shakes and anxiety. CBD is the old tried and true for me. Right now in your life, you might not need the extra stimulation that CBG brings and instead your body might uh, need the relaxation that CBD brings. Um, so this one here. So after taking CBG with coffee, I found that I get a super energy boost after 20 minutes and a good, a general good vibe that lasts almost four to five hours. I do not get rapid heartbeat like when I have too much caffeine. So that's cool. I did not have trouble sleeping that few times. I took it as well. Um, and still seem to get the energy boost from it. Too long, didn't read. CBG, CBD mix gives me a good, clear-headed energy, good vibe without anxiety, that too much coffee feeling. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. High doses of CBG isolate taken sublingually gives me a coffee-like buzz with a mild THC body buzz. My favorite way to use tea, uh, CBG is decent sub, um, sublingual dose. And then take a big bong rip of strong steve. It really enhances heady effects without THG, adding more anxiety. CPG seems to be a fairly potent anxiolytic, so reducing anxiety. Promotes some of the wakefulness, focus, and sociability as well. I found that something like a CB3 to 1, 3 to, three to 2 to 1 mix of CBG, D8, CBD seems the most potent so far. So here are some dosages used. Again, this is not medical advice. Um, and bear in mind that it's not always true that high doses equals more stimulation. Um, so just bear that in mind. And that pretty much wraps up this video. So if you've learned a lot about CBG and you want to know where to buy CBG, um, you'll see a link to CBG uh, in the description below this video, or you can visit just uh, ergogenic.health and you'll be able to find that on my website. And for anyone requesting 
uh, references, please you feel free to email me uh, or use the contact page on my website. Um, so thanks for, thanks for everyone for listening in. And I really look forward to seeing you all soon. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more incredibly useful health content.